Well, hey everybody, this video is going to be about Laplace transforms. Laplace transforms is a technique that's completely different than any other technique we've seen before for solving differential equations. I'm going to run you through the basic idea here. What we do is we start with the differential equation, of course, and that differential equation has the independent variable of t. That's called a time domain differential equation. What we do with this differential equation is we take a Laplace transform of it, and what that does to most differential equations is it transforms it into an algebraic equation. So we started with the differential equation and the independent variable was t, and maybe this differential equation was kind of difficult to solve. Maybe we weren't sure how to do it. Well, we just transformed this differential equation into an algebraic equation, which maybe is a little bit easier to solve. What that algebraic equation might look like is something like this right here. And don't worry, I don't actually expect you to know where this came from or what it means. But I do want you to notice that all the t's are gone from this equation, and we're left with only the independent variable of s in this space. Well, what we can do with an algebraic equation is we can solve the algebraic equation and we solve that equation for the variable capital X in this case, which is a function of s. And in this example, if we solve this equation for capital X of s, which is what we're solving for here, we get an equation that looks something like this. And now that that equation is solved, we can actually take it and transform that solution back to our time domain. The process of transforming back from the s domain to the time domain is called an inverse Laplace transform. And when we do an inverse Laplace transform, we find little x of t, the thing that we're trying to solve for in the first place with our differential equation. In this particular example, if we did that inverse transform, we would get t minus sine of t. So for this entire chapter on Laplace transforms, there are really three things that we need to work on. One, we need to learn how to take a Laplace transform. Two, we need to improve our algebra skills just a little bit. I need to give you some reminders on some techniques. And three, we need to learn how to do an inverse Laplace transform. If you know how to do each one of these three steps, then the process of solving a differential equation using this technique really shouldn't be too bad. Okay, for the last part of this video, I just want to give you the definition so that you can do step one. I want to tell you how to take a Laplace transform just using the definition of a Laplace transform. Here it is. To find the Laplace transform of a function f of t, you take that function and you put it into this integral and you evaluate this integral. So as an example, if you want to find the Laplace transform of the function 3, you put 3 into this integral and you integrate. Now this s here, that is just a parameter. That is not a function of t or anything like that. So we can treat it as if it's a constant in this uh, integral with respect to t. And when you integrate an exponential that has a constant times the variable up in your uh, argument there, you just divide by that constant. So you're going to get actually negative 3 over s e to the negative st evaluated from 0 to infinity. And since the upper limit of integration on this integral here is infinity, this is actually an improper integral. And the technical way to do an improper integral is to replace that infinity with a constant. We'll call it b in this case. We're going to take a limit of this as b goes to infinity. Now I'm going to plug in my limits, b and 0. And we can simplify, make this look a little bit prettier. And the question now is, what is the limit as b goes to infinity of this function right here? And since it's an exponential with a negative power, you might immediately say, well, that just goes to 0 as b goes to infinity. And while this is true, it's technically not always true. It's only true when s is a positive number. So if s was negative 5 or something like that, this would be an exponential with the positive exponent, and this limit would go off to infinity, and actually this Laplace transform wouldn't even exist. So we're going to say this limit is 0, but we do need to include the condition that s does have to be bigger than 0. So last step, I'm just copying down what we have left. We just have 3 over s. So the Laplace transform of the function 3 is just 3 over s as long as s is a number that's bigger than 0. Okay, well that's all I have for you for an introduction to Laplace transforms. The process again is right up here and I just told you how to do the basics of this first step one right here. Now for a video quiz I just want you to repeat this um, definition of a Laplace transform and I want you to find the Laplace transform of 4t using that same technique. Uh, now this does involve a slightly more complicated integral, but I think you can do it. Uh, see you in class.